The VARGAR protocol is awesome, especially for routers. And if you are running DDWRT firmware, you can set it up super easily. Let me show you how. The Surfshark manual VARGAR connection came out just last month and we have already made a guide on how to set it up on OpenWRT firmware. And although being less popular, DDWRT is still widely used even to this day. So let's not waste any more time and talk about the requirements for setting it up. For WireGuard to work, you will need DDWRT version 3.0, 43045 revision or later. For reference, I'll be using the latest build available as of making this video, which is version 3, 50274 revision. Keep in mind that parts of the guide will differ depending if you're running an older version. And if you are running an older version, then I highly recommend upgrading your firmware. Not only will it add more features to your router, but a more important reason to upgrade is that newer firmware versions also fix security vulnerabilities. And upgrading your firmware is super easy. Just download the firmware file from the DDWRT repository, which I will leave a link to in the description just below that like button. And here, select your router model and download the .bin file. Then log into your router's control panel and here select administration. And after that, click on firmware upgrade. Then just upload the firmware file and press on upgrade. The minutes that follow after that are always nerve wracking. But if after a little while you get the upgrade successful message, you're golden. One last thing I'd like to mention is that even though WireGuard is much better than OpenVPN in terms of speed, it doesn't always result in super big improvements. The raw power of your router also really, really matters. It's recommended that your router has at least eight megabytes of flash memory. And for even better VPN speeds, ARM-based processor routers are preferred. On the DDWRT website, you can find various recommendations which can help you pick a good router if you're looking to upgrade. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's get to the setup. Open up your browser and go to surfshark.com. Log into your account and on the left side, select manual setup followed by router. Here on the right side, pick WireGuard. On this page, we need to select whether we have or don't have a pair of public and private keys. They are used during the setup process and you may already have them from a previous setup. But if you don't, then select I don't have a key pair and then select generate a new key pair. On screen now, you will see both public and private keys, which we will need for setting up WireGuard. Now, press on choose a location. You can pick any VPN location, but for this video, I'd like to connect to Paris, France. After selecting your location, press on download to get the configuration file. Okay, that's step number one done. Let's move on to step number two. And for that, we will need to log into our router and start setting up the WireGuard connection. So let's type in our router's address into the URL bar. Since we are running DDWRT, it will be 192.168.11. You will also be prompted to enter your username and password that you have set after you first flashed your firmware. Once you're in your router's control panel, click on Tunnels. Here select Import Configuration and choose the configuration file that we've downloaded from the Surfshark website. And then press on Open. As you can see, most of the settings will be automatically filled up. However, we will need to modify some of them. Please note that if you are, again, using an older version of DDWRT, this part of the guide will be slightly different. Tunnel, protocol type, and other settings up till MTU can be left as default. The MTU value by default is set to 1,440. However, that may not work for you. For 99% of people, it should be changed to 1,420. Without getting into too many technicalities, MTU stands for Maximum Transmission Unit, and it specifically refers to the packets that are being sent back and forth, which allows us to use the internet. When using a VPN, MTU value in most cases has to be lower than what you would be using without a VPN. So 1,420 is a good value for most. However, in my case, I actually had to set it to 1,400, which worked best for me. Anyway, keep this in mind that if you are having any issues, try changing this MTU value. Okay, moving along, local public key can be left as empty as it will be filled automatically later. DNS server section already has one DNS pair. However, I'd recommend adding the other address, which is 149.154. 15992. The same address can also be just copied from the config file that we've downloaded. 
The next setting called Firewall Inbound should be checked automatically. The Kill Switch option should also be checked and this will prevent your normal connection from ever leaking and your data from being exposed. Okay, moving right along, you will also see your endpoint address, which should correspond to the location you're connecting to. So for me, that's France. One thing to note here is that if you are running an older version of DDWRT, you may not be able to paste in the entire address due to character limitation. In order to solve this issue, go back to the Surfshark website where we've downloaded the config file. You may recall seeing a server IP in the pop-up with the additional information. So all you have to do is actually just copy that IP and that should allow you to bypass the character limit on older DDWRT versions. But again, I highly recommend just using the latest firmware version that you can, because that will allow things to run as smoothly as possible. Back on this page, let's now move on to allowed IPs, which can also be left as default. Also, this route option should be enabled. The last bit we really need to change is this persistent keep alive field. Here, enter the value of 30. This will allow the connection to be smoother, so you can also experiment with this value, but generally 30 is recommended. And that's pretty much it. Now just click on save and then apply settings. And the VPN should now be on. DDWRT also has this neat little window showing you if your setup is working by checking if data is being received and sent. That being said, no matter if you're connecting via app or router, I still highly encourage you to check if the VPN is working via the Surfshark website. So for the third and final step, let's check if that is the case. Open your browser and go to surfshark.com forward slash what is my IP. On this page, you should see the green protected status Status, as well as your location change to the one that you're connected to. Well, that is pretty much everything you need to know about setting up your DDWRT router with Surfshark WireGuard connection. Remember to subscribe, like the video if it helped you out, and if you are using OpenWRT firmware or considering switching to it, then check out one of these videos here where we give you instructions on how to set up that WireGuard connection on that firmware. But that's all from me. Take care.